With the Great Hyperspace War lost, the foundations of the once powerful Sith Empire crumbled. The legacy of Marker Ragnos, the unprecedented growth and expansion of a century-long Golden Age, undone in a single year. History remembers 5000 BBY as the year the excessive ambitions of a single Sith Lord led to the fall of an empire. Naga Sedao, disgraced and stripped of power, disappeared onto the fourth moon of Yavin, not to be seen for six centuries. But it is said that when the forest closes a hatch, it opens a viewport. And through that viewport, Lord Vitiate quietly watched as the Sith Empire imploded. From his homeworld of Nathema, he summoned the remaining lords of the Sith with the promise of unlimited power. Through an ancient ritual, he claimed, they would unleash the full power of the dark side unto the Jedi and the Republic. 8,000 Sith gathered at Vishit's palace, some out of ambition, some out of curiosity, others out of sheer desperation, and none left the planet alive. In fact, following the 10 days after the commencement of Vitiate's ritual, nothing on the planet was left alive. The whole planet had been stripped of the very fabric of reality, of the Force. As a result, Lord Vitiate was no more. In his place was a creature that embodied the dark side itself, immortal and all-powerful. The new Sith Emperor. Condemning the Jedi for the destruction of his homeworld, Vitiate led a great exodus of the Sith people into the unknown regions of the galaxy. From his research, he had discovered the ancient world of Droman Kaas, and charted the hyperlane routes they would need to take to arrive there. But despite this knowledge, he purposely wandered the galaxy for 20 years. Over time, his people grew increasingly more dependent on his power and wisdom. And when his domination over the will of those who served him was complete, he led them into the wilds of the jungle planet. There, he declared a new Sith Empire, founded solely on the basis of his unimaginable power, and risen from the ashes of the old. One day, he declared, the Empire would return and destroy the Republic. Vitiate had transcended life itself. Within him laid the life forces of billions the intrinsic energies of an entire planet. To his people, he wasn't simply their ruler. He was their salvation, their beloved leader, their god. As he slowly distanced himself from Imperial society, focused on his future plans, Vitiate appointed 12 of the greatest Sith Lords of the Empire to be his Dark Council. They were his eyes and ears, his voice, and his wrath. They oversaw the day-to-day -day operations of the Empire, and controlled massive sectors of government and bureaucracy. Select any citizen of the Sith Empire, and you could trace them directly to a member of the Dark Council. In some way, each and every person existed under the guidance of a Dark Lord of the Sith. But in exchange for the power, wealth, and influence, bestowed upon each of its members. The Dark Council was expected to be utterly loyal to its master. But treachery is the way of the Sith, and every master that chooses to train a pupil to wield the dark side of the Force must be wary, for every pupil dreams of overthrowing their master. Whereas many of the Dark Council held their seat for mere weeks, before being deposed by a more ambitious and powerful Sith Lord, Darth Nyrus had secured her place in the Empire's pinnacle of power for over two decades. She was an impressively influential figure in Imperial society, and had the trust of the Sith Emperor himself, insofar as he was capable. After a series of assassination attempts, the Emperor advised her to step away from Sith politics until the matter was resolved, sending a Sith Lord by the name of Scourge to act as her agent and investigator. 
This, in and of itself, revealed her value to the immortal ruler. Lord Scourge was a renowned warrior, known for his innate ability to draw upon the fear of his enemies and convert it into a source of power. And when he arrived at her fortress on the outskirts of Kos City, Nyrus saw an opportunity. After he had proved himself worthy through a series of missions, Scourge was taken to Nathema. By that time, all history of the planet had been erased from galactic records, an attempt to conceal the horrifying truth that laid within its lifeless atmosphere. And there, in the suffocating void of Nathema's surface, Nyrus told Scourge the truth. The attempts on her life had been faked, a diversion to draw the Emperor's attention away from a conspiracy to destroy him. He was a monster, and if the Dark Council didn't cleanse the Empire of Vichyat's mindless, unending hunger for power, the entire galaxy would be consumed, just as Nathema had. After witnessing the truth of what happened to the Emperor's homeworld, Scourge agreed to help Nyrus and the two other counselors in their plot. But in the following weeks, a prisoner arrived in Nyrus's fortress and planted the seed of doubt into Scourge's mind. Was Nyrus truly powerful enough? Could they even succeed? This prisoner possessed more knowledge of the Force than Scourge had thought existed, and the more he learned, the more Scourge began to question Nyrus's plans. It was soon revealed that this prisoner was Revan, and even in his darkest hour, his wisdom cracked the iron determination of Scourge's will. The arrival of Mitra Surik was what finally broke Scourge's confidence in the conspiracy. He was now convinced that Revan, not Nyrus, was the man who would defeat the Sith Emperor. His power and knowledge seemed limitless, and explored both the light and the dark side, in a way Scourge had no idea was possible. Unbeknownst to Darth Nyrus, Scourge was granted an audience with the Sith Emperor, where he revealed, in detail, the conspiracy to overthrow his rule. He painted himself an unknowing pawn of Nyrus's deceptions, and presented the Emperor with documents proving his point. After several tense moments, he was escorted out of the Emperor's palace, without an answer to his deadly accusations. The next day, every member of the Dark Council was dead. Twelve of the most powerful members of Sith society, with countless resources and entire sectors of the Empire under their direct control, crushed like mere insects under the Emperor's heel. Weeks later, they were replaced, and the Empire moved on. In a single, devastating show of power, Vitiate made a terrifying statement. No one, not even the Dark Council, was untouchable. All were under his dominion. His will was that of a god, and to betray him was to invite death.